And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your holy name for this wonderful time in your presence. As the scripture says, in your presence there is fullness of joy. On your right hand is our pleasures forevermore. The man of God prayed for his servant and said, Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Lord, we thank you today. Open our eyes to see wondrous things out of your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord is good. Day of trouble. And he knows those who trust in him. Now who? Chapter 1, thank you. Verse 7. Now who? Chapter 1, verse 7. Let's read that together, please. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Or put it another way, the Lord is good because in the day of trouble, he is there, he is their stronghold, and those who trust in him, he knows. The Lord is good because in the day of trouble he is their stronghold. And those who trust in him, he knows. It's not if, it is when. The day of trouble. There is the day of trouble. The day trouble of our wins one. You do not ask for it. It's not something to ask for. But it comes. But there is a stronghold for you. The Lord is the stronghold for you. And he knows those who trust in him. Though it may take, take you by surprise, but not with God. Because none to go from eternity are all his works. God has already gone ahead to provide a way out for you. Amen? The Bible said, God is faithful. Turn somebody and say, God is faithful. For God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. For God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able Point one, the day of trouble is a day of test. The day of trouble is a day of test. And in the day of trouble, you are being tested. It says, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. So there's a limit. There's a limit beyond which God will not allow you to be tested. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. That's the title of the message. The Lord is good. In Daniel chapter 3, Daniel chapter 3, there were three Hebrew men. Shadrach, Meshach, and a bet nigo who refused to bow to worship the gold image i would say the national idol set up by the king king nebuchadnezzar today it's like the money it's like money today because people come to worship money the lust for money controls people Controls them what they can do and what they cannot do. You agree with me? Today, money has become an idol for all to worship. And this is why Jesus knew about this and warned his followers in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. I read from the New International Version. He said, No one 
can serve two masters. Either you hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You cannot serve both God and money. So you see, mammon is money. So the three Hebrew men refused to serve the gold image that was set up by the king. And see what happened. They were threatened by the king. Unless they worship the image, they will be put into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. Burning fiery furnace. And he continued, he said, and who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? But when he put death inside the burning fiery furnace, he put three people there in the fire. But Jesus decided to join them, making four. So rather than the fire burning them, they were not burnt. What a miracle. Look at verses 24 to 25. Verses 24 to 25. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? Look, I see four men loose. Hallelujah. Walking in the midst of the fire. And they were not hot. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Point number two. To tell you that the Lord is good. In the day of trouble, God regulates the test so that you can bear it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, it will not allow you to be tempted more than you can be. Is that not regulation? <laughs> the Lord is good. In John chapter 14, verse 1, John chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Now you can now see that the, 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 when we say absence of trouble, absence of trouble is peace. No. The, 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 the absence of God in one's life is trouble. Peace itself is the presence of God. Because you can be in trouble and still not suffer peace. You can be in trouble and still retain peace. So you cannot say it's the absence of trouble that is the peace. The presence of God brings peace. And because God's presence brings peace, you can be in trouble and still not lose your peace. That's what we're talking about. So Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. If your heart cannot be troubled, Jesus Christ would not have warned us. There are things that will trouble our heart. Before it comes, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. How will my heart not be troubled when there is trouble? Is that not a good question? Because it is natural to be troubled. But it is supernatural not to be troubled in the midst of trouble. It only takes God to make one not to be troubled when there is trouble. How can I do that? He says, he wonders, say, you believe in God. So believing in God will keep your mind at rest. Amen. Believing in God will keep your mind at rest. Isaiah chapter 3, I believe, 26 verse 3, he said, perfect peace. Has it given to them whose mind is stayed on him? Did I get that right? 
26 verse 3 said, Perfect peace has he given them whose mind is stayed on him. Ah, yes, he's right. Because he trusts in you. So this is a helpful advice for every true child of God. Don't say because I am in Christ, there cannot be trouble. There will be trouble, but guess what? Because you are in Christ, you are already a victor. Amen? Praise God. Trouble will come, but that is not your destination. Amen? Here what King David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. Where is that in the Bible? Psalm 23, verse 4. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. We are told that the rod and the staff are the weapons of the shepherd. The shepherd, the rear sheep, uses the rod and the staff. The rod is the top of that of that stick that he holds. And that rod, he will use that rod to tap the head of the sheep so that the sheep will be kept away from danger. And then you now have the hook, which is the staff. They call it the U-shaped hook. And that will, it will gently use that around the neck of a sheep that is wandering away. So that they will use that to stop that sheep from wandering away. Is that not a good shepherd? And that is what the shepherd does. And that is why today Jesus has become our great shepherd. What is the rod and what is the star? We'll get there. What does it mean to us today? The word of God protects us from the enemy. David said, your word is the lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Psalm 119 verse 105. Psalm 119 verse 105. That tells you that the rod, the rod that protects us from the enemy is what? The word of God. The word of God is the rod that the great shepherd uses to tap us, prevent us, prevent us from the danger zone. Even though we're in, the tro in trouble, but yet we will not see trouble. Because his rod, his rod guides us, protect us from the danger zone. What about the staff? The staff, as we said, is the one that stops the wandering sheep from getting lost. The good shepherd uses the crook round the neck of the sheep and bring, bring the sheep back to the fold. The Holy Spirit is the star. The Holy Spirit is the one that keep you and I in fellowship with the Lord and with one another. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 3. 1 John chapter 1 verse 3. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. The Lord is good, isn't it? The Lord is good. Point three. In the day of your test, you are not alone. I didn't hear amen. In the day of your test, you are not alone. You need to realize this because many people forget God when they are in trouble. They look out for who other person they can run to. But you've missed it. Because remember David said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. How would they comfort you 
if the rod and the staff are not with you in trouble. So the word of God, the rod, and the Holy Spirit of God in you, they are with you as a child of God in the day of trouble. And that is where and how they comfort us. So your first response in the day of trouble should not be a surprise. Your first response is to raise up your hand to heaven and say, God, I recognize your presence. I recognize your presence. Amen? And that was why David said, yeah, though I walk through, I am just going through the valley of death, the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for, thy, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I said the Lord is good. A stronghold, a stronghold is a fortress. A fortress is a secure place. A fortress is a fortified place. A place that cannot be broken into. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Proverbs 18, verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is what? A strong tower, a fortified place, a secure place, a fortress. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Why would there be a stronghold if there is no trouble? Why would there be a stronghold if there is nothing that can endanger one's life? So you could see that the Lord is good because he has already gone ahead to provide a secure place, a fortress, a fortified place so that nothing will endanger our life. But many people forget that they are not alone in the day of trouble. That God is there with them. Hallelujah. You can see why the name of the Lord answer for some and the name of the Lord will not answer for others. What kind of people will the name of the Lord answer for? The righteous. Thank you. The righteous. He said, the righteous run to it and are saved. So it's not everyone that runs into it. But it's only the righteous. Are you the righteous one? In the day of trouble, the righteous that knows that he is trusting God and knows that he is not in that trouble alone, he knows that God is there with him and with her. That one that is righteous will call upon the name of the Lord and the Lord will save him. Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall do what? Save. Only the righteous can do this. Who are the righteous ones? Those are the people that are standing right with God. They are standing right with God. Who are the people that are standing right with God? I will know if you are standing right with God if you fear God. Because those who fear God, there is a way they will conduct themselves. Even when there is trouble. Even when there is a trouble. There is a way they will conduct themselves. They will not be the one Say all sorts of negative things or looking for help where there is no help. They are the ones that will run into where? The name of the Lord. And the name of the Lord will save them. Some put their trust in man. But the best of man is still a man. And the problem of that is that woe betides anyone whose trust is a man. According to Jeremiah 17.5, Jeremiah 17.5, it said, Cursed is the man who trusts 
in man. You could see the present tense there. Who trusts is always trusting what this man can do, what this woman can do. Ah, I've met these people now. They will help me. I've met these people. They will help me. He said, cause is the man who trusts in man. It's not for you to be saying that, oh, after all, God is not going to come down from heaven and help me. He's going to use man. No, no, no. That, is not, that is not right. Why? Because it is good to trust in God rather than trusting in man. You see, he says, cause is the man who trusts, who keeps trusting in man and makes his flesh, and makes flesh, rather, makes flesh. We've discussed in the Bible study on Wednesday that the flesh there referred to a carnival, a mankind. Mankind. Man became flesh when God created man out of dust, isn't it? So that flesh refers to humankind or mankind. Say, I makes flesh mankind is strength. And see the effect of that. Whose hearts depart from the Lord. So it's a derailment from the Lord when you put your trust in man. So if I were you, it is true men are there who I will say to myself that my trust is in God. I don't want to know who God will use. He can use anyone. Because the danger there is that if I'm not looking for man that God will use, I'm telling God, God, use these people. No, you have missed it. Because the one you thought God, the one you want to be used might be the one that will betray you. <laughs> so be careful what you pray for. Amen? You cannot put your hope in a mist. Man is just like a mist. A fog. You know the morning fog? Is here today and is not there. It's gone the next time. James 4, verse 14. James 4, verse 14 tells us a man is just like a fork. You cannot put your hope even in money. As we have said earlier on, because it will disappear one day. According to the word of God, Proverbs 23, verse 5. Proverbs 23, verse Verse 5 said, For riches certainly make themselves wings, especially when the money is the one controlling us and not God that gave the money. The money will disappear. See, for riches certainly makes make themselves wings, they fly away like an eagle towards heaven. Neither should you put your hope in your job. Or your ability to take you away from God is a doomsday. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. Psalm 20 verse 7. Psalm 20 verse 7. So don't even put your trust in what you have. That will be your horses. That will be your chariots. Don't put your trust in your Possessions. Don't let them control you. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. What will you do? Remember the name of the Lord your God. Remember his word. Remember his promises. And look at the next verse. Verse 8. They are bowed down and fallen. That's because they have a misplaced priority. You cannot serve the blessing more than the blesser. That's a misplaced priority. And the consequence, the, the end result of it is that it brings people down. They bow down and fall. Even if you are the smartest in class, that's your ability. Don't depend on your ability. Depend on God that gives him ability. And that is how God will make that child that is brightest in the family makes, will make him even brighter. Hallelujah. 
those who put their trust in the Lord shall not be put to shame. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. Yes, God has given you the ability. You are very good with sciences. Why not? Still give God the glory. How do you do that? Honor God in your sciences. How do you honor God? You pray that God give me more understanding so that I can use my sciences to, 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 to showcase the glory of God in whatever I do. Someone that is going to go great in life, that is going to go far in life, will have time for Bible study, will have time for prayer, will have time for fellowship. For indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ, and with one another. The one that is wise will not miss out of this fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. In the day of trouble, remember the name of the Lord to run to. Remember the name of the Lord to run to. There was a woman who did so. In Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 29. Mark chapter 5, 25 to 29. She had a medical condition for 12 years. And she was hiding herself away from people because of shame. Then one day, when she heard about Jesus, that Jesus was passing by, she said to herself, in her own house, she said, if only I can touch his garment, I shall be healed. So she attributed healing to Jesus. She said, if only I can touch his garment, I shall be healed. So it's important what you have been saying to yourself, even in the trouble. This woman did not say, this trouble will kill me. But she said to herself, if only I can touch his garment, I shall be made well. What are you saying? Or what have you been saying to yourself secretly? As a man thinketh, so is. What you have been saying secretly, don't you know that God is there with you? What you have not been saying privately to yourself, how then do you want God to honor your prayer? It's what you keep saying to yourself that you will become. If I were you, I will be practicing God's presence even in my privacy. Because if I can remember God even in my darkest hour, and I say the word of faith to myself, even in my darkest hour, don't you know that is what will happen to you? The woman said to herself, she wasn't talking to anyone, she was talking to who? herself. So it is time to start talking to yourself. That is what faith is. I can make it. I will make it. I will not die. I shall live. It is true, some people have, in my family have not gone beyond this level. But I will be a pace setter. I will make it. I am the head and not the tail. My lives are falling onto me. Where? In pleasant places. Hallelujah. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That is how comfort comes. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. So she said to herself, if only I can touch his garment, I shall be healed. And so she did. It's one thing for you to be saying some positive things to yourself and not practicalizing them, not carrying them out. You see, faith always speaks. Faith in God always speaks. But then, faith without works is dead. So it's one thing for you to say, I have faith. 
Show me your faith by your works. When you have faith, you walk in the same direction with what you do. Your actions will be in the same direction with what you believe God can do for you. Amen? That is what faith does. So, she did. She touched his garment and see what happened. She was healed. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. Would, would that have happened if she had not carried out what she said to herself? No. So it is important not just to say it, but to do it. The kingdom of God is not mere talk. The kingdom of God is with action. But she put her trust not in a man, not in the material world, because she was once wealthy, but now she has spent all that she had. So there are some conditions that waste us, waste our lives, waste our resources. May that not be yours, Jesus. This woman was wealthy, was wealthy, but no longer wealthy. Because that condition took away her wealth. But she did not put her trust in her material wealth, which unfortunately has gone. But she put her trust in God. Because when she heard about Jesus, something spoke to her inside. She believed God. And she said within herself, if I touch his garment, I shall be made what have you been saying to yourself and what have you done with what you have been saying? These are the questions. And where are you heading? These are the questions you must ask yourself. If you believe that your condition has been deterring, or oh, sorry, has been lingering, just there. It's just there. It's not, not no action. Nothing has been, been working. Then ask yourself, what have I been saying to myself? And what have I been doing to, to corroborate what I've been saying to myself? Is what I am doing, is it on the same line with what I've been saying? Because that will tell us which direction you are heading. Faith will always head in the direction of God. But if you are moving away from the direction of God, then there's something wrong with your belief system. So this woman was heading towards Jesus because when she heard about Jesus, she came to Jesus. What you trust in will be revealed in the day of trouble. What you trust in will be revealed in the day of trouble. Remember I said the day of trouble is not if, it's a way. Look at verses 13 to 34. Verse 30 to 35. I know my time is gone, but listen with me. Bear with me, please. And Jesus, immediately, knowing in himself that power has gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched me? Of course, you will know that people will touch Jesus because he was surrounded by a mob. But the touch of this woman was a different touch. Because what this woman had been saying to herself in her own house before she came to Jesus was led, was inspired by God. Let God inspire you. That's why David said, I will remember the Lord. When you remember the Lord, in the day of your trouble, then you will see the goodness of God. Look at verse 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened, something always happened when you touch God with the touch of faith. Something always happened when you touch God with the touch of faith. That is, when 
the word of God inspire you in your action. Something always happens. That something will happen to you. Amen. And something good. Because the Lord is good. Verse 34. And he said to her, Jesus replied the woman, Daughter, your faith, you see, your faith has made you well. So all along, it was faith that this woman was moving this woman. It was faith. When she heard about Jesus, something told her, this is my opportunity. Time and chance happen to them all. This is my time. This is my chance. I too will do what the word of God has said. And because this woman acted in the direction of the word of God and in the direction of God himself, she now touched Jesus based on this initiation. And when she touched Jesus, Jesus Christ recognized the touch of this woman. Even though a lot of people have been touching Jesus. Remember, Jesus was surrounded by a God. God will always respond to the step of faith. I said, God will always respond to the step of faith. Jesus said, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. The Lord is good. The woman in her moment of truth, in her time of trouble, was drawn to Jesus. She was drawn to Jesus. What draws you in your life? What draws you on a day-to-day -day basis? Everyone, I believe, is drawn by something or someone on a day-to-day -day basis. Because whatever draws you is what drives you to do whatever you have set out to do for that day. God wants to drive us. God wants to drive you each day. He wants your attention. Remember the man that was born crippled and was begging at the, at the beautiful gate. See what happened when in Acts chapter 3 that he gave Peter and John his attention. What happened to him? God healed him. And he started walking. So maybe we have to refocus our attention and start giving our attention to God. And then what you expect God to do for you, he will do. Because attention always precedes expectation. In 1 Kings chapter 4, when Solomon gave God his attention, he was drawn to God. And see what happened. God made him wiser than all the men. And in verse 34, and men of all nations who had heard of his wisdom came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Is that not beautiful? The gift of God over Solomon. Because Solomon's heart was drawn to God. He gave God his attention. But unfortunately, the same Solomon, the son of King David, his heart was drawn away from God. Can you imagine? His heart was drawn away from God. And by who? Women. For it was so when Solomon was old, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God. I believe the advice for the senior citizen, all that ones among us, don't use your latter years to mess up your destiny and relevance. However, God still showed Solomon his faithfulness despite Solomon's unfaithfulness. And why was this? 
because of King David, Solomon's father. God is a covenant keeper. And God kept his covenant. Even though he was upset by the action of King Solomon, but God said, this is what I will do. I will tear away his kingdom from 12 to 1, but I will not do it while he's still alive. I will do it after he's gone. Why? Because of David, his father. So many of us, we are recipients and beneficiaries of the mercifulness of God because of the covenant our fathers have had with God. And God wants us to continue in their stead. But God is faithful. Even at the crossroads of our lives, God is faithful. I want to end with this one place. Acts chapter 12. About the goodness of the Lord. King Herod has just killed James, the brother of John, Zebedee, in verse 1, with the sword. And he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews. So what did he do? He was encouraged to take also brother Peter, verse 3. There are some punishment that comes by associations. And you could see that because of his association with James, it was easy for Herod to capture Peter. But the Bible says in verse 5, and the church began to pray. That is why I know that prayer is the key. Prayer is the answer to your problem. Especially when you are connected with God. It's not every prayer that God, that God answers. No. But God answers the prayer that comes from a loyal heart. And when you read from verses 5 down, you will see that the prayer works. Especially when the people you are praying together with, their hearts are open to God. God is good. I said there is some punishment that comes by association. But victory also comes by association. Especially if you are associated with Christ. The Bible says that, but thanks be to God, who always lead us into victory in Christ Jesus, and make known the fragrance of his knowledge through us to every place. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. And that is how you and I can be beneficiaries of the victory that comes by association with Christ. The Lord is good. Take this with you. Whatever situation you find yourself, it's a divine setup. Whatever situation you find yourself, as a child of God, is what? It's a divine setup. Because God is there with you. They put the three evil children in the midst of the fiery furnace. But remember, Jesus was there with them. So you are not alone. Even David knew. He said, I am not alone, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. With every head closed, every head bow, rather, and every eyes closed. Let us pray. What is that situation? If you are a child of God, let God help you. He said, we shall remember the name of the Lord. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous draw into it, and they are saved. Do you believe what I just told you? Do you believe the message? Then if you believe the message, what has that spark in your life? What fire has that spark in your life? What action would that initiate in your life? Just like that woman with the 12 years of medical condition, when she heard about Jesus, something sparked in her. She said within herself, if only I can touch his soul, I shall be made whole. But she didn't stop by just saying it. She carried it out. What a spark in your life. If you are a believer, something you have to respond. Respond to this message. If you want to get out of that situation, respond. What has God said to you? What has God been saying? What has God promised? There is victory in Christ Jesus. There is victory by association. Yes, you are going through some stuff. 
because you are a child of God. But remember, victory is assured. Victory is assured. Open your mouth and talk to God. That in this situation, I know I am not alone. You are with me. Jehovah lead me. Guide me. Let me go through this with you. Let me go through and finish well. In the name of Jesus, I want to testify of your goodness, of your mercifulness. Help me, O oh God. Retain me. Hold me. The word says you will help me. You will strengthen me. You will uphold me by the right hand of your righteousness. For the right hand of the Lord, do it valiantly. Jehovah, help me, O oh God, in this situation. Walk me through it, O oh God. Walk me through it. Who is praying there? Walk me through it. Help me, my exams. Help me, O oh God. Help me to scale through. Help me, O oh God, to be a winner at the end. I want to receive the victory that comes through Christ Jesus. If you are that woman, that man that they have said you are going to die, you will not die. For Christ is the man that is hung on the tree. Jesus Christ has become a curse for us. A curse cannot affect a child of God. Give your heart to Jesus and be delivered. You will not, you are, you cannot be cursed because Jesus became a curse for you. The curse curses shall not come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give your heart to the Lord wherever you are. I want to be saved. Jehovah, help me. I want to be delivered. Help me. This thing wrong in the family. But Jehovah, you have become a curse for me through Christ Jesus. Therefore, save me from this curse. The only way that Jehovah can save you from the curse is when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Give your heart to the Lord right now. Tell him to save you. I don't want to die in this sin. Jehovah, help me. Save me, O oh God. And heal me. Welcome Jesus into your heart. Welcome him into your heart. Wherever you are, welcome him into your heart. Ask him to come in and be your Lord and Savior. Let him dwell with you. Let him dwell in your heart. You will not be touched by the enemy because Jesus is there in you. Ask him to write your name down in the book of life. Write my name in your book of life, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. And uphold me, direct me how to live my life. Direct me, O oh God, how to live my life. Are you praying that? Pray that and you will see the goodness of God before the end of today. Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you Lord Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's start those hands together for the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everyone.